Hey everyone, this is Marcus Leto, the father of the Master Chief and co-creator of the Halo Universe, and you're listening to Hawaii's number one podcast, the Casanova Podcast. Is this it, it, we and plus I'm drinking. I'm drinking. Hell some, yeah. I'm drinking Moscato because it's like it's been one of those weeks. I mean, I've read the Twitter <laughs> feed, man. I don't blame you. I do not blame you. Long week. Oh, God. Yeah. It, <laughs> anyways, uh, welcome everyone to the podcast. I decided this is going to go on multiple podcasts. So anyways, you know, shorten my workload. What's up, everybody? It's Mikhail Casanova. Welcome back to the show. And as always, we have the honor and privilege of having a good friend, Caleb, a.k.a. History Behind the Warrior. How you doing? I am doing wonderful, man. It's a pleasure to be back, and it's lovely for us to finally have the opportunity to talk again face to face. As you know, we we always kind of like have these fun like yearly get-togethers, which kind of update everything in terms of, like gaming industry and what's going on in each other's lives. So, no, thank you for having me on. I'm I'm really really happy to be here doing this again after quite a while. Definitely, yeah. It's we've been doing this what four, five, six years. I think it must be four because I what? you first reached out to me when I was doing Injustice Two, and it has been Injustice Two, Mortal Kombat Eleven, and okay. now God of War since we have uh, okay. talked to each other. Okay, okay, yeah. It, it, are you getting to this point? Because I'm currently here, but like, are you at this point where like time is like a blur, like the years, the months, the day, it just flows. Oh, brother, I'm not even going to lie. I nearly forgot about today because my friend messaged me at the gym and I was like, fuck, what day is it? Because <laughs> yeah. I'm working like these long hours. The sick thing is when I sit down and I start working, I physically can't fall asleep after it until I finish a project. So mm -hmm. I'm like, that, that that normal eight hour shift can slip into 14 hours very quickly and I don't realize it. And it's it's really bad, I know. But it's it's one of those things where I can't get peace of mind and I can't rest well unless I know I've done it right. Dude, don't don't feel bad because like when you messaged me, I was like, wait, what's today? Oh shit! <laughs> <laughs> I, was like, I was like, oh god. See, yeah, now wait, I feel less guilty. So I say it's <laughs> fine. We balanced it out. We balanced it out. Oh my god. Yeah, it's 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 been crazy. Like I've <sighs> so I've been reviewing. Um, I got the uh I finally got the Vitrix uh Pro FS. That finally came in, so I work I they wanted me to do a holiday gift guide, you know, for like that plus the what is the controller? Was it the Vitrix BFG? They wanted me to do something for that too, and then some third party PDP controllers no one cares about. Yeah. Uh, so so I, I did the guide and I'm working on the review. And then uh, I was doing a bunch of other games at the same time and just got to a point where I'm like, God, this is this is work. This is just work. And then on top of like coming off of pneumonia and then chasing around a toddler and then just dealing with the fuckery of content creating, I'm like, I, I need a vacation. And it's, it's so funny because yeah. people are like, oh, but all you do is like play on a computer. Do what I do for 10 hours. Yeah, I don't like. Don't get me wrong. Uh, this job, by all intents and purposes, is very much so a privilege. But it is one that is unfortunately earned through YouTube's emphasis on content burnout. Um, and it it's why there's if you hit burnout, guess what? You're either gonna have to one keep going, or two, you're gonna have to like enter a level of burnout that is like self-destructively unhealthy and it is it is one of those things where it's just like i love what i do but fuck man i need to take care of myself and that's where i have been for like a long long time to have started like now that ragnarok's out i i have less stress so mm -hmm. I, I can luckily now take care of myself but i'm not kidding dude um this week i've been catching up on sleep I slept 20 hours from Monday into Tuesday because my body is still making up for all the lost sleep from the last two and a half months. Jesus Christ. Yeah. 
it is. You you don't think it's that bad, and then you lie in bed and you're like, nope, this is not good, not good at all. And the thing too, like a lot of people don't understand when it comes to this, like you really don't get days off, you know, no. and it, it's and it's like I, I, I like. I'm not where you are. So anyone who watches or listens to to this podcast, I'm not anywhere at the level of success that History Behind the Warrior is. But like, Listen, you're too kind. I, you, dude, you're here's a your inspiration. The, your story <laughs> is inspiring. But like, thank you. Up and like for the last eight or nine months that I've been consistent with the content, I've honed in my core focus being Steam Deck and PC gaming, I was rapidly growing. Like you saw the post, I was like, oh, I hit this this milestone, I hit this milestone, I hit this milestone. And then I got sick back to back. And then in that time, I wasn't making content. And so when I got back to it, my metrics just fell to shit. And yeah. so now after like a month of just grinding and grinding and grinding, I'm starting to see my metrics pick back up because there was a point where I could drop a video and within a few hours it's over several thousand views. Now I'm struggling to hit a thousand just because I feel like I fell out of the, the algorithm. And like, it's the, the mental aspect of this too. Like people don't understand that too. Like I'm looking at like, God, I'm finally, I was finally making, you know, okay, we'll just throw a ballpark out there. A couple grand a month. I was, I was making that between ad revenue, uh, sponsorships. I was finally able to get my foot into doing that, you know, paid yeah. 30 seconds, 60 second ads. Cause I got tired of people's like, Oh, I'll send you this to review. No, pay me and I'll, I'll do a video. So, you know, I, I finally got to that point. And then when I got sick and now I've just seen my metrics just drop off and it's stressful and, you know, and I'm, I'm, Glad we have a cushion. <laughs> yep. I'm glad we have a cushion, but god damn it, man. I, I feel like I failed. And it's and I'm trying to get back on track and I'm mentally just I I feel fucked. But yes. Mm -hmm. it, this is not easy. Unfortunately it isn't actually um I'm actually in a, a bit of a similar situation with that myself. Uh my so I can't believe this happened and it still boggles my mind. Um, my history of Kratos video, um, it got age restricted on the 15th. That video has been up for 13 months. And then all of a sudden they were like, we're age restricting that because it was bring it was bringing in a lot of views and it was picking up a lot of traction and it, you know, it just kind of came out of nowhere and I'm like, that's really fishy. That doesn't seem right. So I don't know what's going on with that. I, I need to get that resolved, but basically the second that got hit, the entire channel's been hit since then. So it's why at the moment, I'm only going to bother throttling out history of videos because it's what does best on my channel. And the thing is, it's just like, algorithmically, it seems like YouTube's like, you have to make this content, you have to make this content, or we're not going to do mm -hmm. shit with your channel. I'm just like, mm -hmm. well, if, you know, I have my own bills to pay. So I like making the episodes anyway. Um, I, I say that I, I made like a thirty-three minute episode one like last night, and I never want to do that again. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it's just, it's just it's a crazy one, man. I I love what I do, but man, are there some like there, there are hurdles in our way that you can never understand because YouTube doesn't wish to share that information with you. It's, it's best effectively talking to a wall. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, that's, <clears throat> it is what it is. I suppose in that case, it's either a case of uh, you take a holiday uh, and you come back from it, or two, um, you just keep going. And uh, I, I've been on burnout probably since February, and then I worked throughout my entire time of post-COVID, well, COVID, post-COVID, and pneumonia into release for Ragnarok. Uh, so, you know, it might be a case of, huh, that whole, well, I say that. Uh, I do have a holiday coming up in like two weeks' mm -hmm. time, so I'm I'm really looking forward to like just taking a week off. It's, you know, and I know we were talking before we, we started recording this podcast, but yeah, 
your experience uh, going through COVID and pneumonia. Mm-hmm. And that was something. Jesus, Jesus Christ. Like, you don't realize how bad it is until basically you can taste your lungs. It's awful. Yeah. And that that's not something I want anyone to really do because I- I've tasted enough of my lung to know that I should probably go to the doctors and get that cleared out. Like, because the pneumonia part of it made it so hard to breathe for the most part. And, mm-hmm. you know, because it shuts up so-, so much of your lungs and it makes it all just filled with mucus for the most part that you have to clear it out. And I kid you not, I tried to go to the gym like at least one month after having new, uh, COVID pneumonia. Terrible. Uh, I couldn't breathe for the most part. There was no circulation. I might as well have just been getting a shoe and bashing it against my face whenever I was on the treadmill because that would have been more satisfying. But the entire experience of that was just fucking raw. And uh, I, I hope that anyone who gets, you know, COVID or pneumonia, you know, looks after themselves and doesn't do what I do and tries to be a jackass about it. But it's not smart. And it's 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 not even being a jackass about it, man. It's just it's we we're creatures of routine. And mm. it's like for the for okay, so for those who don't understand, when you're constantly sitting behind a desk talking to a camera, talking to a microphone, editing for ungodly hours you have to do things that not only for your physical more so for your mental well-being mm-hmm. and you know working out is one that's very very good like i i say i was very consistent with the gym like 2018 2019 mm-hmm. beginning of 2020 and then when the covid hit and i couldn't go to the gym and then yep. we had the lockdowns here in Hawaii, so like we had curfews. It was bad, and so, and I was like, "All right, well, fuck it." I was just like eating and all that, and then mm-hmm. next thing you know, oh, we're having a kid. <laughs> yeah, I mean, <laughs> it's like any plan you had at that point. It's like, oh, okay, which all right, you know what? We're just gonna go with it. Which you know, I don't blame you, dude. Like, if considering when covid just kind of hit everything just kind of went to shit like everyone couldn't really take care of themselves they either had to stay at home or if you were working at home like you just had to keep going sort of situation and it's, it's a very sad uh, sad truth that we're all kind of like slaves to the machine in a different way um i love what i do but fucking hell is it a lot of times and um you know i'm just i'm glad we're out of it now Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm I'm personally, you know, glad myself that I I ended up starting start to go back to the gym this year properly. Um, because I've been, you know, being stuck in the house for three years, just working endlessly and endlessly, and doing esport event after esport event, and then going from game to genre to commentary and all of this. I was just kind of like, I'm really sick of sitting at my monitor all the time. I you know, I, I always make a meme out of it, but I, I do it like this, like, lift sad rock made sad voice go away. So <laughs> that, that's how I kind of see it. And you know what? I am i couldn't be more happy with the fact. And it, it's the first time in literal years what I'm catching up, because I, I have a very athletic background. Um, before I did a lot of the content creation stuff and a lot of the music university stuff. So I'm glad I've been able to get back to that, revisit it, and just like build upon an already very strong foundation. Yeah. You know, um, and definitely let's, let's talk about, okay, before we dive into that, I'll say, (laughs) I want to, I want to touch on this because you said this and people who don't understand this, when you're making content and YouTube puts you in a category, Mm-hmm. And you start to do well in it, and you're making money, but you want to do something else. We're not saying you can't do something else. What we're saying is YouTube is like, you're doing this. We're going to push this. We don't give a shit about this. Mm-hmm. And it's like, we got bills to pay. So you can say we're switching up. You can say we're selling out. I don't really give a damn. Are you paying my bills? 
YouTube is paying my bills. <laughs> yep, that's the simple way of putting it. And the unfortunate truth of that is, like, as much as uh, you, you can appreciate your audience and really love them for putting them in the situation you are in, a lot of that is give and take. What you do is technically a free service. What they do is also technically a free service. It goes hand in hand with helping each other out in terms of entertainment as well as well-being. But, you know, the, at the end of the day, you can't make content if you don't have a house to make it in and you can't really do stuff if you don't have the money there for it so it's one of those things where there needs to be a fine ground of being able to appreciate and love what you have while still being able to sustain uh what is it uh, a consumable income that can feed your own revenue so it, it's a it's a hard balance and uh, you know if it's me then i just spend my entire paycheck on dumb shit but it's just the case <laughs> of oh you don't even want to know half of it I've, I've developed very bad habits but um, it's just kind of like finding this middle ground and then learning where you stand in it and then where you can push from it um, for now I think like it, it's a case of everyone still coming out of COVID and just kind of realizing what they can do and what works for them would you also say from like a financial perspective like when companies because i know you you get hit by a lot of companies all the time mm -hmm. but like when a company reaches out to you like hey we got this product we like you to do a video on it or review it are you the same as like I, i've gotten this way over the last year and a half where it's like unless it's something i really want and even then we need to do like some type of pay sponsorship because a lot of companies take advantage of free publicity and marketing from creators because it what is it to send them something? Send the creators mm -hmm. something. It's nothing. It's a drop in the bucket. It really is. So the, the thing is, when it comes to sponsors like that, a lot of people don't realize that they are kind of budgeted with how much they can actually like pay each creator. It's up mm -hmm. to you to kind of push that needle and see where they say that's too much or that's, uh, that's too much, they won't pay for it. Now, when it comes to sponsors, they typically approach me regarding it, and I always have a flat rate. Um, it's a very generous flat rate, but it is basically a threshold, and if people say no to it, then I have no problem not working with them again. Because I'm just kind of like, I'm asking in many cases for the bare minimum. If you can't reach the bare minimum, then your product probably won't be for me. And a lot of people don't realize... Um, I'm actually very, very picky with the sponsors I do feature on the channel. Um, I don't pick up sponsors that aren't associated with the content I do produce. Like, if it's anything, like, it is why in many cases, whilst I absolutely mean the fuck out of Raid Shadow Legends, um, it's associated with the channel and the fighting game mechanics and medieval stuff. So I'm like, okay, that's cool, whatever. Um, and I generally try to pick out like sp specific sponsors that are quite beneficial to my own audience. Like if I were to take on uh, Raycons or Displate, for example, uh, I've that's going to become a very dangerous addiction for me. I can already tell. Um, like there's just different things I like and I enjoy, and I hope people can come to appreciate um, that I'm able to bring that to the channel while simultaneously, you know, being able to work with these companies and at least get something for it as well. Yeah, you gotta pay your bills. <laughs> you do, you do. <laughs> no, I'm the same way. Like, any of the stuff that I've, I've pushed out, and I've had people complain, they're like, oh, why are you pushing this, the Steam Deck dock, or why are you pushing these, like, chargers, or this other stuff, or this service and I'm like one is something I use two it relates to the content I put out three uh -huh. they're willing to pay for this ad segment and I don't have a problem with it like I'm I, I've been approached actually by Ray Shadow Legends to do stuff with them and it's so funny because people would be like oh you shouldn't do that because you know you're selling out if you do Ray Shadow Legends and I'm like they're willing to pay mm -hmm. uh, it's a case of like if I were to uh, take a sponsor from Raid Shadow Legends, people would have a problem with it, but at the end of the day, it is just Raid Shadow Legends. If I were to take on a sponsor from fucking Blue Chew that comes out of nowhere, then I expect people <laughs> to have a problem with it, which would be completely understandable because I'm just like, 
hey, bro, you want to see something else from Raid? Say no more. I'll sort you out, man. I'll sort you out. Like, it's one of those things where it's just like, sometimes some people don't realize that a considerable amount of thought does go into picking some sponsors at times. But again, that's like the stuff behind the scenes that people don't see. Um, I know some people might see, oh, it's you selling out. Oh, it's you uh, picking up extra money on the side of blah, blah, blah. It's like, no, I'm cashing in. There's a big difference. Big, big difference. Mm -hmm. And like I said, in many cases, it's a win-win scenario. You have as much incentive to click on that sponsor button to give me money as you are to manually skip the ad. Yep. So it, it's... It, it, there's no real problem there. It's just people on the internet sometimes just trying to be people on the internet, which is very silly. Speaking of which, uh, catching up on the the last year or so since we last did this, uh, as I said before we started recording, you over here got swole, man. Hit the gym, <laughs> getting muscular. I, I see the pecs over there. You doing the, the titty pop and everything like that. <laughs> I don't think, can I? Close enough. Close enough. <laughs> but yeah, dude, uh, I, I started going back to the gym uh, back in February this year mm -hmm. specifically. And it was a sole case of um, me on content burnout. It, uh, I just, I got stuck on the monitors for too, too long. And I love what I did. And I still do, obviously. It's just that when you're constantly at home and then you kind of reach this point of like you're not kind of happy with how you're looking because you know I, I you know going back to actually what we said of the last interview uh whilst i was very very proud of everything i did in esports i'm not gonna lie from 20 what must have been 2020 all the way up until last year i absolutely hated how i looked because i put on weight um I wasn't looking after myself, uh, for God's sake, I started dyeing my hair out of box dye instead of getting done professionally, and I looked like a fucking rat. Um, it was just general lack of like self-care, health, and just eating shit. Mm. Now, these days, um, I take much, much better care of myself, and I, I, I watch what I eat for the most part. I don't try to make sure that I force myself into a situation where I, I'm not enjoying what I'm eating. Uh, when it comes to doing weightlifting or taking more care of your health, it isn't about, you know, trying to get as small as possible and then trying to look like as peak as you can. It's a lifestyle change in itself. So it's not visual. It's a sustainable lifestyle. And mm -hmm. that's how I've kind of seen it. And I've been much, much happier for it. I, um, I literally go to the gym every two days and it lets me blow off so much steam. Um, was being stuck indoors for so long. I think it's like maybe a real long-term brain thing where I, I was stuck in from COVID for so, so long. And I, I just grew frustrated of being online on the internet for so, so long. It's why I haven't tweeted at all this year. It's why I haven't really talked to anyone because I'm just, I'm steering clear of social media outside of work when I have to. And it has been one of the best experiences I've really had for myself. No, I love, again, it goes back to, I love what I do, but there needs to be a fine line of how much of that I bring into my personal life and how much I leave out there on the doorstep. And I found that just earlier this year, that there was a distinct difference between history behind the warrior and then Callum. And for all intents and purposes, as, as dramatic as that might sound, um, I decided to just kill history behind the warrior this year this is just all me and i'm much happier with that and that's not to say that obviously you know i am still not history behind the warrior but there are certain points where i have to put myself forward i have mm -hmm. to know what direction i'm taking my life and take some priority because you know as happy as i am in my current state of life i've learned that i'm someone who really likes to strive and do new and better things for myself. And this was definitely one of them. You know, I have some other plans myself at the moment in the background um, that I would like to get around to, but it's gonna be a long and arduous process of me managing to get around to doing what I, you know, I dream of doing, but 
you know, it takes time, and I'm more than willing to put in the time if the results are there. And it's just, it's, it's. I'm, I'm happy for you. Thank you very um, much, man. Because I'm also jealous of how muscular you are. I'm like, look at this <laughs> swole motherfucker over here. <laughs> but you no, don't want to uh, know how much chicken I ate, man. It's a lot of chicken. Are you? Do you calorie count? So, or do when? <laughs> Before, uh, all right, so this is quite funny. Um, before <laughs> I actually looked into that, uh, I was just kind of like, I'm not going to count macros. I'm just going to eat, and then I'm going to just do this. Um, the thing is, at first, I was kind of dirty bulking, and then I started seeing results that I didn't want. And I was like, okay, let's dial it back a little bit, eat a little bit more clean. And it started looking much, much nicer. Unfortunately, I did get COVID uh, during the middle of a really big cut because mm -hmm. it turns out from dirty bulking, I had put on a lot. And I mean a lot of mass. I was eating uh, twice the amount of macros I was actually supposed to be doing. Um, oh. It was just, it was too much because I was, it was just me eating a bunch of crap and it was working. But, um, you know, it, it starts to take a toll on both your health and uh, how you look because you know because of how your skin sheds what you have in your digestive system effectively comes out through your skin if you eat mm -hmm. like trash it's going to come out through your skin and eventually you're going to start feeling it um so i started eating a little bit more healthy in that instance um then i got shafted by covid and now these days i found like this fine middle line of where i can sustain myself because i mean i mean i mean drinking a bottle of coke at the moment but I guarantee you, tomorrow I'm going to do leg day, and then I'm going to not want to get up again for about five days. But, you know, it's about, like, you put out what you take in, and the most important thing about it is, as I, I went back to it, is sustainability and being mm -hmm. able to maintain not just the, uh, the diet, but also the lifestyle, because I didn't realize how difficult it was to kind of do this until... I realized one, I do it in my free time, and two, I have to juggle it in my work hours where I will tunnel vision. So sometimes I may end up uh, missing out on like a meal or a snack. Now I'm trying to religiously integrate it because after post COVID pneumonia, um, I, I went through a really bad two months of me sometimes just not eating for an entire day. So Ooh. it's kind of like, yeah, it was really bad um, because it had affected me in such a way that I lost my uh, sense of appetite. And I didn't realize how hungry I was till I ate something and then mm. I would binge eat. I, I would straight up like eat nonstop for the, those two hours and whatever I could find and then I wouldn't eat again for about another 24 hours. Wow. Yeah, it was weird, dude. Luckily, that, that's been pulling back in the last two or something so weeks, but uh, I, I hated it. I hated it so much. Did you ever get like... Um... I know, like a lot of people I know who ended up getting COVID, they got like they call it the fog, where like their memory was hazy and all that. Did you ever experience that, or is it just fucking uh, up your lungs? It was mostly the lungs. Like the first two to three days of COVID was probably the worst of it, because um, it constantly felt like I was strapped to the back of uh, like someone's bumper, and then they just hit every hurdle on the way home. And I was just like, m just getting the max range of every impact of that. Um, luckily, that passed, but it it did not feel like it was only three days. It felt like a month. Ooh. Yeah, it was. It went great, dude. It was so <laughs> great. Uh, as as far as like with your your workout routine, I know you say you go. Uh, I'm assuming at this point, like six days a week, five, four. So I I go every two days um, two because days. Okay. I, I want to, the thing is I'd love to go like, I, honest to God, uh, I would rather like to go like five or six days a week, but it's not sustainable for one, for the channel. And uh, two, I want to make sure that I can put myself in a position where I can exercise, at least have enough recovery time so that way I can go back the next day because um, I, I split my workouts into like, what was it? Tricep, bicep, uh, chest, and then on day two, it's just legs, uh, back and shoulders. So I kind of split up the muscle groups into individual separate things that do not conflict or 
clash against each other, that means that there's enough recovery time, at least in between, that I can kind of do something. And if I if I want to send myself to hell, God forbid, I, I might just do cardio in one day. But, you know, I'm better than that. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, bro, I was doing um, like 20, so 2018, 2019, 2020, before pre-COVID, I was doing HIT six days oh. a week. Oh. And bro, dude, I was shredding the fat like crazy. Like I, twenty twenty, right before COVID and all the shutdowns, I was, I think I was at one seventy three, and I hadn't wow. seen that since like, God, I think I was like twenty three, twenty two. So that was the best shape I'd been in in years. Like I finally, oh my like, God. I in my beach body and then that hit night right now like i'm not at my heaviest right now because mm. I've been basically for the last uh four four months or so i've been cleaning up not entirely my diet but at least I, my water intake has been massively mm. going up uh my wife and i we we started because uh, we moved right mm -hmm. uh we we got this condo here in, in waikiki so now we literally walk three to four miles at least two or three times a week you know mm -hmm. so we do that make a rounds all the way through waikiki hit the beach come back and uh i i'm getting to a point where i'm like i think i can do hit again but then when i try it for like five minutes i'm like yeah, I don't know if I can do that. I'm not as young as I was. <laughs> and I'm like, maybe I should just hit weights and just keep with the walking. I don't know. I need to ask you, man. Mm. You're, you're looking over here <laughs> looking like Kratos. I, I see the axe right there. <laughs> oh, yeah, I just got lingered in the background. But, uh, yeah, I think it's just the case of... Because the thing is, it's like, you got to find a free time, obviously. And, unfortunately, you got to commit to the diet which is the hard part and it's now a case of not finding the time but so much making the time because um i i, I do some demonic hours uh, i will go to sleep at nine or ten if i finish work early and then i will straight up just go and hit the gym at 3 a.m or 4 a.m yeah uh, because i i know if uh, i wait because i don't suffer from like deep sleep i suffer from like short sleep so if i wake up at 2 or 3 a.m I know I'm not going to go back to sleep. I know I'm just probably going to go on my, uh, what was it, on my PC and play something or do something that diverts my time. But I'm just like, I'd rather do something productive. And I know that if I do, at least if I come back home, I'm, I'm definitely going to sleep for a little bit afterwards, which, you know, good for recovery time. How, uh, I mean, like roughly how long are your workout sessions when you're going like one, two, three hours? So I go for, at the moment, I'm probably peaking around two hours. Normally I go for about, well, when I was, but before COVID, mind you, I went for about two and a half hours each time. And I was doing it very, very comfortably. Uh, at the moment, I'm hitting about two hours. I'm not quite meeting the workload that I did pre-COVID, but um, I've been racking up for weights, luckily, mm -hmm. since then which has been nice. It's just the case now for me personally of, oh, I should probably fix the diet side of things, at least eat a little bit cleaner. So that, that's been kind of the fun part. I mean, it's kind of interesting because it means um, I, I've been picking up new things, new ways of cooking stuff, which is surprisingly so some of the most basic shit you can find. Um, Literally, I, I, I keep it, it, it's very, very simple and it's very, very much so to the point. Um, just like three or four meals a day and just slip in like two snacks in between. Hey, nothing wrong with keeping it simple. Yeah, so, I mean, it's literally simple as easy. Like my, my normal lunch every day, it's four eggs and uh, mixed into spinach and th that's it. I didn't need anything else. <laughs> so, so would you say with like, your current workload, your workout schedule, and overall self-care, do you find it find it more difficult making time for people? Oh, definitely. Um, so, 
I actively try to uh, go out and see any of my friends. Because um, it is the thing, right? Uh, I ended up leaving a bunch of discords earlier this year because, again, I wanted to disconnect from like being online on a constant basis. So I'm kind of like hanging out and seeing my friends and stuff. But it's in this uncomfortable situation now where I've been working online for so long but sometimes I just don't want to fucking talk to people when I'm finished. I just don't. And it's not like, oh, I don't like them or, oh, I've forgotten the message or something like that. Sometimes when I look at my phone and there's like 15 or 16 or 18 different messages, I'm like, I, I don't know if I want to deal with this right now. I don't know. And then that, that I don't want to deal with it turns into tomorrow morning. I'm like, shit, I probably should have gotten back to that. So... These days, I do actively try to keep in touch with people. Um, I I have a very very uh, like small handful of friends who I do hang out with. I think that's very very much so important because when when it comes to this job, you meet a lot of people, and a lot of people aren't the people that they do portray sometimes, which can be kind mm -hmm. of dangerous when it comes to meeting and affiliating yourselves with people. So again, it's another benefit of me kind of like pulling myself away from everything and just kind of enjoying the small things, I'd say. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's definitely... I mean, for the sake of mental health, it's better to keep your circle of friends small, especially IRL friends. And a lot of people may not understand that, but you know, a lot of times like your friendships that you have with people online, it can be completely different than the ones you have with IRL friends and uh -huh. it, trying to maintain that time for yourself, for your mental health, for your physical health, for your just overall being for your content and then trying to maintain relationships with people, it becomes a chore because like you said, like you, you just get to a point, like I'm seeing my, my phone, like I constantly get notifications like, oh, here's this person DM'd you, this person messaged you, this person texted you and I'm over here like, I don't want to engage. I have to do this all day, you know, it, it's, it's, and it's not that we don't want to necessarily quote unquote fuck with people. It's, well, okay, yeah, there's truth to that. We don't, but <laughs> but anyways, but like it, it's, it's it's really just like our time is so. Like, a lot of you may think twenty four hours in a day is a lot of time, which it is for most people. We uh, don't have a set schedule, so overwork is unfortunately encouraged and incentivized on this platform. So yes. the eight hours can quickly become sixteen hours, and then. After you do that, and God forbid you listen back to your voice for about 16 hours, you're like, I don't want to hear anyone else's voice. I think I'm all right. I think I'm good. <laughs> oh, man. Um, it's, a, it's a double edged sword for sure. It really is. So, so speaking of which, are you, um, you, you got the opportunity to work with PlayStation, which has been mm. absolutely phenomenal. Uh, you got to do your uh, pie. Well, yeah, your podcast and your interview with Matt Sophos uh, from God mm -hmm. of War. So let's talk about that. How has that experience been for you? Oh, dude, I was fucking bricking it the entire time. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I was. All right. So God bless Matt. What happened was is that I did the interview about three or four days after I had gotten the, uh, the code to review the game. What Matt didn't realize, and what I didn't tell anyone from PlayStation, and they'll probably laugh at this if they do end up watching it, uh, I hadn't slept in those four days. I was playing the game back to back endlessly, sleeping for about two hours, and then getting right back onto doing. So I'm like, I want to do everything so I could get to this interview and at least be partially prepared. Still didn't finish the game in that time, mind you. So literally, as we were going through it, it's why I stuttered and stammered over so many of my words during the podcast. I'm very happy with it, but there's a part of me that was, like, trying to force out words from my brain that weren't quite, like, glued together yet. Um, so that happened, but, you know, it was really nice being, because, was it, I've never worked with PlayStation previously. Um, they were you really, lie. really nice. No, you I've lie. never worked with PlayStation. Nope, I've worked with Warner Brothers, I've worked with Bandai Namco, um uh I've there's been in no there's no Google's. way I've worked with them longer than you. 
No, you I definitely be- have. I don't. I don't have a working relationship. Like I, I currently, um, the only working relationships that I've kind of had or sustained has been with uh, WB, but that's mostly because like my work with uh, Mortal Kombat. Um, I've never worked with companies like uh, Koei Tecmo. I've never worked with companies like Capcom, for example. Um, I've never been endorsed by them, so I've never the working relationships never been there. But that's not to say like, oh, it was uh, because he never reached out or whatever. Because one, I I never did. Uh, because my content never fell into the ditch, uh, the district of exclusivity. So they would have had no incentive to have reached out to me. So I don't necessarily blame them for it. It's not even really a bad thing. Um, it's just that the business wasn't there, so there was no reason for them to reach out to me, which is completely understandable. Okay. But uh, yeah, you've definitely worked with them longer than I have, for sure. Okay. I can't, I can't. That's just so weird to hear. <laughs> like, what? <laughs> like, what? Yeah, I mean, to be like I said, I mean, it makes sense in many, many ways, and I, I don't necessarily blame them. Like, um, a, again, it's a case of I work in a very don't forget, I work in a very niche genre of games. Like most people on YouTube that talk about Mortal Kombat only exclusively talk about Mortal Kombat. A lot of people don't get away from that, and that isn't a knock on MK only like exclusive content creators. It's just that when it comes to meeting and branding, uh, like brandishing out of other companies um it's kind of hard to do so mm-hmm. so you know it, it's one of those things where when they reached out to me i was really really chuffed about it um because matt and the team i've i've interacted with them a little bit not too too much i don't know no them but they've been nothing but lovely uh very very sweet and it was it was very kind for matt to know that um you know the, the team as well they are fans of the fans and they watch the content and they appreciate it and I do uh, a lot of work with each other, um, so it, it's nice to hear them at least praise us and appreciate that. You know, we kept the spirit of the game alive whilst they were working really hard in the back to get the game in our hands. Okay. Yeah. I, okay. So completely unrelated question, but shoot. I love PlayStation. I love working mm-hmm. with them. What I don't love is the short window of time that they give the review copies out. And they're like, here's the embargo. (laughs) Yeah, I'm not going to lie. They only gave it to me, like, uh, what was it? Five days before. And I think, yeah, it was five days before release. And then I was talking to, I think it was, it was one of the community managers. And... (laughs) I, I said I'd you know try to get everything finished and sorted out and she's like you mean it was this was two ga- uh, two days after they gave me the game they were like when well, you finish the game in like two days and I was like no 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 I'm far away from finish I'm still going at it <laughs> so even they were like what what's uh? that's what make that seem right but yeah I mean to be fair I, again it's it's my first time working with them so I can't really say much from my own experience. But, it, I mean, you've played through it. Ragnarok's a really big and very long game. So, I, I I missed that embargo window completely. I was like, I I gotta focus on trying to get this game done and doing everything. And my first playthrough rounded out to like, I think it was like 42 hours, 43 hours. So, I was like, really tunneling that game. Oh, you did better better me, dude. I did 60, 60 65 hours and it really it, yeah. Just So like when I was talking so to Mich- Yeah, when I was talking to like Michelle from from Sony, she was like she's like, "Wow, I'm really impressed with your review." And I'm like <laughs> I said I am too because I put all these hours into this <laughs> fucking game and nobody fucking watched it because it didn't have Steam Deck in the title. <laughs> oh, bro, the algorithm is vicious, man. It is. It is. It is. But no, like that. That game is 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 so long, and the people like I, I have a lot of people that are always like, "How are you reviewing all these games?" I'm like, luckily, a lot of them I get early. But some companies like to just 
like, oh, here's a few days. It'll, it'll be out. And it's a long ass game. And it's like, yeah, I'm not getting that out. Like, oh, is it Square Enix? I love them too. I get annoyed with them because a lot of games that they'll give me is the day of release, the day oh. before release, or two days after release. And here's your embargo. What? <laughs> I mean, that, that, that's a pretty tight schedule to fit, if anything. It's like, well, we kind of missed the embargo, but here you go. We might like it. <laughs> and they go, oh, how come there's only, uh, uh, how come you only have, like, so much content? Like, you only show in, like, the first couple hours. And that's all I recorded. That, that, that mm. was it. That, that's all you're going to get. <laughs> oh, dude. You know, it's funny we talk about recording. Um... I, I've fallen into the horrible, horrible pit of forgetting what it's like to record an infinite amount of B-roll footage, and I'm not literally yesterday morning, I filmed B-roll footage all the way from 1.30 to like 6 or 7 a.m., and it, it's a, trust me when I say, people don't realize how agonizing that is, because you only see about five or six minutes of it, but if I don't like the take and if I don't like the gameplay, I have to go back and replay those sequences and watch the same cutscene over again just to make sure that the footage looks good. People don't know that. <laughs> uh, do, do you, what, what um, editing software do you use? I use Premiere and I hate it because it crashes all the time. Uh, I am a, a very basic man. I've, I've been using this for seven years. People haven't realized or picked up on this because I don't make it look like it is. I've been using iMovie for seven years. <laughs> I... <laughs> I've been using the most basic software for seven years, and people have not realized it, because I purposely disguise all my editing, and I know mm -hmm. how to make it look good, and not make it look like iMovie. But I've been using for basically free software for seven years, and I have barely had the need to, base to upgrade it, because it, I mean, I can do, but to what extent would it make any difference in that sense? So I'm just like, if no one's asking if I'm using this, I see no need to change this right now. <laughs> so, and I mean, hey, I was I was never taught editing. Everything I did was off. What was it? Was all on the fly from 2015. Mm -hmm. So everything I've learned from then has changed significantly till now. Um, I'm still learning new things, which is really really good. Um, but again, it's like, it's a case of me taking probably iMovie to its like highest and final form whilst really disguising it and making it not look like iMovie. The fact that I have to put in a 1080p video before anything else, because if it's 720, it will render out the entire video to the yeah. quality of the video before. Not many people realize that. And uh, there, there, there's a lot. There's a lot of those tricks. I ended up finding out the hard way because I made 720p videos for the longest time and I didn't realize it. And I was like, why does it look like shit all the time? And then I dropped the 1080 video in and I was like, are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> what is this evil? What is this evil that I have to do that? What do you think of the people that are like, oh, you need to record everything in 4K, edit in 4K, upload in 4K? I put it like this, unless you have a 4K TV at home, I do not care for 4K at all. Like, there's no incentive to be that extra. Most graphics cards can't even handle, like, 4 8K. So w what need would you have? Um, your internet and bandwidth must go to shit as well, just for a YouTube video. And I, I'm, <laughs> I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but I'm not going to produce a, a video file that's probably about 60 gigabytes big for a two minute video. Like that is outrageous. And I really have enough problems. Like at a 1080p video, my 33 minute long video is like nine gigabytes. Mm -hmm. and that's, at, that's at like 1080. <laughs> uh, and they want me to do that at like 4K. I'll probably be gone on my holiday next week and come back and it will still be going. Like, no. 
<laughs> I'm not doing that. It's insane. Okay, I've gotten I've gotten people. Uh, but okay, so here's the thing: I constantly get complaints about one that my content is not 4K. Two is because if you look at let's see, can I can I do the full screen? I'll do the full screen. Well, so this is the room, right? So since we mm-hmm. moved to the the condo, it, it's uh, it's a one bedroom condo. Thankfully, we own it, right? Uh, as opposed to the house and all that stuff we had to deal with. I miss the three bedroom house. I do. I, I, I miss having a dedicated room. But okay, most most of the stuff I'm shooting out of my bedroom. And so I have people that complain. They're like, oh, it looks so tacky because you got your bedroom behind you. You got the blur effect and all this other stuff. You, you know, you should have like a whole dedicated space. Where? Where? Mm-hmm. I do what I can with what I have to. Yeah, like it's a case of like, Oh yeah, you shouldn't dedicate an entire room in your house just for video editing. And I'm like, you do realize what you're asking for, right? So that, that losing an entire bedroom is one thing. Having to share a room with someone and then have a child is another thing. Like the space and a house yeah. Getting housing isn't exactly an easy, simple walk in a park, let alone getting a free bedroom house and maintaining it whilst having mm-hmm. a child at the same time. Nah. Uh, you know what? Better yet, the reply should just be, hey, pay for, pay me for it. Pay me for the extra room. Then I will do it. Dude, I've, I've become such a dick online when it comes to that. Because it's like, you, you deal with the comments, you get the, you deal with the fuckery of the comments, and you just get to a point where it's like, man, I don't have to... No, fuck you, pay me. <laughs> yeah, because it's literally... If, I put like, if someone is being enough of a dick to say oh yeah why aren't your videos in 4k i'm just kind of like pay me for the room to make it in 4k then pay me to do it please then i'll give you what you want and then you can't watch it on your mcdonald's wi-fi please (laughs) oh god bro it's like so like I, i get that complaint all the time and it's like oh you know, you need to do better because you've got 15,000 subscribers. Your quality should be better. I'm like, look at some ordinary gamers. He doesn't do anything special. Neither does with uh, Moist Critical or Penguins or whatever. He doesn't do anything. Like a lot of the folks, that you don't have to. You don't have to yeah. be MKBHD who really started the whole cinematic thing. Yeah. I'm not trying to do that. I don't have a team. Those people have teams. Yeah, I mean, I'll put it like this, man. I've almost made it to 400k. Still using iMovie. <laughs> no one knows it. No one fucking knows it up until today. And it's been seven years. Like, fucking, what was it? Skill up all his thumbnails all of sl- uh, slideshows. Because he, th- he used to work, uh, what was it? That's what his business and job used to be pre YouTube. He used to design and do slideshows for companies for presentations. All his thumbnails. All from him being basically a pro at using slideshow. I a lot of people, that. yeah, a lot of people don't, and it's like the smallest things, and you're like, <clears throat> well, what? How, why is this working? Why aren't they paying for Photoshop? I've never paid for Photoshop. I pay for a free online subscription service that's like ten quid a month, and then I bust out all my thumbnails for that month. Or you can get the torrents. Yeah, I, I mean, I could get a torrent. I do have the torrents, but the thing is, I'm just too miserable to teach myself it when I already know something. <laughs> yeah, it's just like when people are like, oh, you got to spend all this money every month on this, all this software. It's like, no, you really don't. You really don't. You know, there, there, There's so many alternatives. Realistically, if you are, it, a lot of people forget that a lot of it is subscription services. So it takes a lot of money out of your pocket depending on what brand you buy yourself into. And again, people don't realize that you have to do that while still maintaining your normal lifestyle, rent, food, and then any other additional services. And then I know people could say, oh yeah, well just cut back on the additional services. Or I keep to doing the same thing that I always have that none of you have realized the difference, like fucking iMovie of all things. (laughs) Oh God. It's why I'm just like, if I can do it, anyone can do it. I don't care what anyone has to say. It's like, I, I, I've i made this all work. I made this all work off literally 
the most simple things and I just make it not look that way. So, so speaking of that, um, with your content journey, you know, mm-hmm. over the, the, the years that you've been doing this, how often would you say you've had to make shifts in the style of content that you're covering for the benefit of the channel? Because a lot of people seem to think you just do one thing and you that's all you do. Mm-hmm. And it... I get the idea of that, but in, you know, in theory, but in practice, you do have to change. Yeah. So, uh, you know, that's, that's actually a really good question. I think about it, but when it comes to big shifts, God of War was naturally the biggest shift on the channel. You know, it was a completely different genre. Um, the channel suffered for quite a while because it wasn't Mortal Kombat. Uh, but I was willing to stick it out. I was happy with the content I produced. Um, luckily, uh, my channel did get a lot of attention post-reveal, w- which held it up for quite a while. But eventually, um, my videos did fall into the algorithm of what people were wanting to watch. Um, and the history of Kratos video, which I, I don't want to sound like a smarmy dick about it. I knew sound it was like, going to s- sound like a smarmy dick. <laughs> I, 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 I knew it was going to take off. I knew it was going to be good, and I knew it was going to work. Um, since then, it has become the most viewed video on my channel, nearly capping out at 3 million views. And wow. the reason why I knew it was going to do well and work was because I genuinely took a lot of time and I took a lot of passion when it came to doing it. I made sure that when I did do it, I did my homework on it, so it would come out in it a way that I was happy with. Um, again, small me dick. Um, I a lot of the content I produce, it's kind of for me half the time, because mm-hmm. I I feel like it's if I'm I'm my own worst critic, and I, I'm never ever happy with a lot of the content I do make in hindsight. But that is a video that I'm extremely proud of. So if I'm extremely proud of, of it and I've been working that hard on it, then I do know it's good. Um, and it, it's not just because I was proud of how it was written, but how it was edited. Because that was the first video that I ever handed over to an editor. And it was a friend I knew um, who's absolutely fantastic at what he does. I gave it over to him and he polished it up and made it better than anything I could have imagined in my mind. Um, and it just came out being uh, absolutely sublime, and it just worked and picked up. Um, in terms of like moving and shifting, a lot of people don't realize when it comes to moving from one game series to another, you're going to have to roll with the punches for a little bit. YouTube isn't going to reward you for it right away. Uh, the Kratos video took about three months to actually pick up any real traction, but once it did, it did do very well. Um, But when it comes over to moving to another game series, dude, you have to learn so much. And that that ranges from understanding the lore side of things to the gameplay side of things to then understanding the content side of things. And then the channels that are associated with it. Because here's the thing, right? Um, Ever since I did YouTube, I think in the last three or four years, I don't watch other content creators that cover the same game that I do, because we all kind of occupy the same space in that sense, and the ideas, uh, what is it, the the reality that our ideas or videos can cross over or blend are very, very close, because I could watch someone's video and subconsciously develop an idea from like one small thing in that video, not realize it's from them, and then make a similar video like a week or two later on and then not realize it, I'm like, oh, fuck, I've just copied someone else. So it's definitely a case of knowing your craft and then choosing how to kind of work and funnel it in a way that is unique to your own brand, but also something that people haven't touched on before, because that's what allows a video to breathe. I want to add to that, because, like, I'm at that point now where... When I started making Steam Deck content, I was one of the first people, along with a lot of the prominent Steam Deck creators you see now, 
we all started day one when it was announced. We we're making prediction videos or talking about it. So I'm in the algorithm for that. So you search it, you'll see me. Uh -huh. And at one point I was watching other people. And in some of the videos I've done, I was like, I, I would get some people say, oh, your video is very similar to such and such. And it's because I was watching a lot of other Steam Deck people because I was like excited for it. And, and I also tied into like me being excited to have like when I created Decked Up the Steam Deck podcast, I was excited to have other Steam Deck creators on. I kind of since regretted that because online personalities, don't worry. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, that's the yeah. way put it. That's what it is. But like it's at a point now where I actually had several come on the podcast and they don't even care. They're like they didn't want to be on the show and I'm just thinking to myself, why the fuck did you come on? Mm -hmm. I didn't want to be here. But anyways, um, <clears throat> that ran aside because I've ranted several several videos about that. Um, <laughs> I, I, I have gotten to a point now where with the exception of like one other Steam Deck content creator who I'm cool with, I don't really watch anyone else because at this point I see the trend and I see the trend to grow is to pump out videos for every little scrap that Valve puts out. They say this or this is the games that were downloaded the most this month are purchased and then you've got the same circles or people pushing out the same type of video or same type of clickbait because now it's like oh Nintendo is threatened they're scared of the Steam Deck. No they're not. They don't give a fuck about it. The company's been no. around for 100 and how many years? Oh, no, it's it's definitely a case of it's a, it, I you know I can respect the hustle of being able to chase after YouTube clicks like that, but I think there's a fine line of you know kind of click baiting and it just kind of being bullshit. And unfortunately, these days they kind of blend into one thing. Yeah, yeah. So I'm at a point now where it's like if I make a video it's about something I'm interested in like I the, the best performing video I've done that actually got me out of the slump from the last month and a half was my review of the Steam Deck seven months later I did that yeah. you know it was just me speaking frankly about my experience with it I like it it's got it's got growing pains if you're picking it up now you're not having the same experience I had from seven months ago uh I did a video on the skin I put on. Like, I, I basically make... Uh, it's like you were saying earlier. You make content for yourself because that's what I'm doing. Because if I don't care about it, then why am I doing it? And yes, am I... It, anyone's like, oh, he's riding the wave of Steam Deck. I'm riding what's working and that I'm interested in. Will I shift? Yes. But does that mean I'm throwing away everything else when I shift? No, because I'm still doing everything that I was doing before. Mm-hmm. It's just, this is what's working. Like, a lot of people are like, oh, how come you don't do a Casanova podcast or all the interviews with all the people? Because I, I did that for, I mean, how many years? I've been doing that for so long. And it just got to a point where it's like, I've interviewed everyone I wanted to. Um, it opened a lot of doors for me, and I don't have to do that. I don't have to kill myself trying to, God, when I was working IT, 18 hours a day, and then trying to, like, rush home to like do a 30 to 45 minute podcast with someone and 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 lie to my boss is like where i'm at you know and it's just it's grueling dude it's yeah. grueling like, i don't have to do that grind anymore i pick and choose a lot of stuff i want to do now and you know i i, I appreciate where i'm at and Steam Deck is kind of where it's at. Like, is I'm never, you're never gonna see me be that person. Like, Steam Deck or nothing, because that's the same thing that people were doing with the Switch. Oh, the Switch is the greatest thing ever. No, it's not. It never was. It's not. It's a choice. But do I prefer PC gaming? Yes, I do for a lot of reasons. But I like mm. my PlayStation too. I like my yeah. Xbox. <laughs> There's a lot of benefits and perks to both. I, I honestly. I'm just kind of glad that, you know, Ragnarok did arrive here because for the longest time my PlayStation has been kind of a paperweight. Um, now I have something to play on it. I I'm hoping that next year with, you know, uh, Insomniac's Logan uh, and uh, the second Spider-Man game, you know, I have more of incentive to play it because I really want to get the most I can out of this PlayStation, considering how difficult it was <laughs> the longest time for quite a few people to snag them. So 
I, I'm glad because what was it unreleased? The only game I'm pretty sure I played was um, Demon Souls because mm-hmm. uh, that that was the first time I had the opportunity to play Demon Souls, and um, that was I enjoyed exclusive, it. Exclusive, wasn't it at the time for the PlayStation f- the f- for the fight? I think that was because mm. everything else was like it's on PlayStation Four as well. Yeah, I, I'm. Fi- I think that was the whole kind of thing with uh, PlayStation 5 on release, and I enjoyed it for the most part. The thing is, it, it's a game that really feels its age. You really, yeah. really feel the age of Demon's Souls. Yeah. yeah. That's that's definitely true. You know what's also interesting? I got shit from the KOF community because I don't make kof content anymore and it kind of made me because we we actually talked mm-hmm. right before kof 15 came out and you made yep. the prediction and i agreed because i saw mm-hmm. it was going to happen it died the game did die people don't talk about it they barely play you go on twitch they're barely streaming it uh the kof c- creators have shifted to doing street fighter and other top because it, it's it's that's if you're talking about niche people that's super niche that's so niche the thing is it was a case of again it comes down to a variety of different factors the thing is what does king of fighters have to appeal in the current era that games like um <clears throat> what was it games like street fighter and tekken aren't doing because mm-hmm. For the longest time, it was KOF vs. Street Fighter. These days, it's Tekken vs. Street Fighter, and Street Fighter it hasn't been winning that fight. Not since Street Fighter V. So, Tekken's been doing its own thing, Street Fighter has been a side thing. KOF was just... It's kind of been a husk and kind of lost its identity since uh, 13. Uh, ever since it went from doing going from character sprites to 3D models, which has been a rough integration. I know some people currently like the look of the current King of Fighters. To me, I'm like, I'm glad it looks better than the last one, but that's also not saying very much. Um, to me, I do also don't think it helps that the community itself is very... A bunch of, a bunch of dickheads. Yeah, I mean, I well, don't want to put I, it like I, I that. Said, I said I said it. <laughs> You know, it doesn't really go to because ev- we're going off like uh, not a majority, but a very large minority that's left. Yeah. And unfortunately, with how much of the fan base has been cut down since then, I guarantee you they're still there, and they may even be the majority at this point. But if you up like this, if you scream at a content creator to make content for your game, whilst being unbelievably rude to them. They're not going to incentivize that. And it's what happened with me, with King of Fighters 15. It was either 14 or 15, one or two. Um, I, I've i never been a King of Fighters fan. I've never had the association of, of that. But I still remember doing my History of Geese Howard video, which I was very proud of, mind you. Really happy with how that turned out. Very, very good. And then I, I will never, ever forget this. Because I was like, wow, you have no idea what the fuck you're talking about. Um, This person said to me that, oh yeah, I watched it. It was really good, but something was lacking in it. It's just like it was soulless or something. I'm just kind of like, what kind of criticism is that? What kind of criticism is, oh, it was kind of soulless and blah. How am I supposed to learn or grab any information from that because that's literally fucking you giving me nothing to work with it's like oh did you not like the cadence of my voice didn't you like how i structured my video did you not like the music did you not like the way how i i just fucking put out the video it's just a case of not even someone having a problem with the actual video itself it's someone actively looking for a problem in the video and then i when that was my Last interaction with a KOF fan regarding uh, making any KOF content, and I was just like, straight up, I'm sorry to do it to people that are fans of King of Fighters and like the channel, but I will never cover King of Fighters again. Because that was such an abrupt and awful, like, 
It was not even a form of criticism. It was just someone talking a bunch of shit for the sake of it. And how how am I supposed to learn and get better if you're giving me as vague stuff as water is wet, sky is blue, speaking hard? Like, what the fuck am I supposed to do with that? Like, it, it, was, it was one... It, it genuinely, to this day, blew my mind. And it's been like three or four years since then. And I've never forgotten it. Because it was, it, again, it's one of those things where, like, you can't believe someone said that, but they did. And it, you, you just got absolutely nothing from it. Mm-hmm. No, and, and, um, so, as you know, there's a trailer or announcement from SNK about, I guess, the upcoming season for KOF 15. The only time I do any type of coverage of playing KOF at this point is like I used it in my Vitrix video to showcase the stick because it's like if I'm going to showcase how good this stick is I'm going to play the most difficult game to play on stick for me which is KOF and Mm. that's it but as far as like covering like the new season and everything going up I'm not doing it mainly okay first off and you remember that I think I, I shared this with you beginning of the year when I went through this but the way the SNK community manager or whoever the PR person was that was handling working with influencers or content creators and how they treated me I felt like was a fucking slap in the face because I was covering KOF all the trailers every fucking single thing about that game before all the other people I'm not trying to knock anyone else, but I was covering it before a lot of the other people who got codes hopped on and started doing anything about it. I was covering Mm -hmm. it. I was working on a timeline. I was doing that. I was doing a lot of stuff. And then when I started seeing other people who just hopped on within the last couple of weeks, oh, I got a code for KOF 15. And then when I reach out to the community person and or PR person, whatever the fuck the the guy's name, I'm not going to, I'm not going to even give him a name on this thing, but like, when I reach out to him and he tells me that oh go look go look around go ask around go sn- you know sniff around whatever the fuck he said to me and I'm like really yeah that's a very very strange way because I know um like when it comes to giving out codes and shit they have a very like they have a set amount of codes to hand out to people right so it's very confusing. Again, I can't really necessarily say much um, because they gave me a code. I ha- I didn't cover King of Fighters beforehand. Um, it was kind of out of the blue, um, so I'm thankful to them. But I I I'm not a King of Fighters guy, you know. So I'm again. I appreciate that and I thank them for it. But you know, I I don't know what else was necessarily going on in that side of things. But it's very strange I feel um, but that was the case which is interesting because I had another company it was a third party company that eventually gave me the code and it was um, mainly because one of the other people I was actually cool with as a PR person who I've worked with for years they're like how come you're not covering the game We're, you know, I'm seeing all these announcements of the other creators that are covering it I'm like well this is what the the SNK person told me and they're like are you fucking serious? I was like yeah so they're like okay let me let me ask around and connect you to some people so that's how I ended up getting connected to a third party that was covering it in Europe who gave me an oh. American code so that it, and, and so then when I started streaming again like when I did a video I was pissed off when I did the review and it came through on the review and when I did a sh- some streams the SNK PR person would pop up in there and he's trying to be all cordial and nice to me and I'm like fuck you <laughs> it's like no I'm good and now that the game is dying and they're doing everything to like get people to cover it reach out oh would you like to cover season 2 no I'm not even paying I haven't paid for the Samurai Showdown characters I'm not I am not going to cover anything KOF or SNK related going forward. Now, with an exception, if it's Galro 2, because I'm a fan of Galro, maybe. But 
I would rather cover Guilty Gear. Mm-hmm. I, I like Guilty Gear. I like Strive. Hell of a lot more fun than KOF. I'd rather cover that. Which I have. I covered the Sin trailer. But, it, you know, it's just... It's weird how some of the PR people act in an industry. You know, like, I appreciate the ones who are cool to me and who I've had years of dealing with. Uh-huh. Some of them can be very unique, on especially how they act yeah. on Twitter. You know, and it's not naming names of anyone, but it's just, it, it's interesting. Um, yeah, there's a, there's a lot. I've, I, in my time of working in the games industry, I've only interacted with one community manager negatively. Um, again, I much like you, I'm not going to give that person the time of day because they don't deserve to have their name in my mouth, for one. But, you know, I, I get it. It's a, a lot of people that work in games come from games, and we all kind of, you know, live in the same hemisphere. And the thing is, there's a lot of egos that come with that, and there's a lot of likes and dislikes that come with that. If you can't put that, you know, on the side or away for your own, like, if if you can't put your personal beef away mm-hmm. whilst working, you probably shouldn't be a community manager. Like, you probably shouldn't be working in any professional instance that interacts with other people. But you know, he, unfortunately, that was the case for a little while, um, and I, I was perfectly fine with letting that person know that I didn't like them. I'm very, very happy they know I don't like them and I want them to go on knowing that I don't like them in whatever studio they wind up in because I don't care for them. But outside of that, you know, I've met some unbelievably lovely and wonderful people through the game industry. Like, everyone who I've worked with through um, Warner Brothers has been absolutely fantastic, you know, um, Mark Ward, Ruby Remju have been lovely, lovely people. They give me so many opportunities to work with doing more combat and covering stuff and bits in the movie. Even a, a very good friend of mine who I'm so proud of and so, so happy to see her like get the job. Um, Romanova is now community manager for uh, Bandai Namco USA. And, you know, she's able to... I couldn't think of anyone more passionate to do that sort of uh, work and job. Um, even one of my close friends from Soul Calibur Darkzy now works in, um, what was it? She works at Supermassive Studios. They did The Devil in Me recently. Mm-hmm. Um, she does so, so much work there. And the, the, I, I, most of my interactions with people in the gaming industry have been nothing short and lovely. And I've had the pleasure of getting to know a lot of them personally. And they're amazing. But, you know, again, I think you. Once in a while, when it comes to working with that many people, you are going to come across a sour apple or two. Yeah, yeah. yeah I've run into that, especially like with uh, Square Enix. Like I've worked with them for four or five years at this point, and uh, they recently brought in some newer people. And when I would reach out for certain titles, uh, I would get rejected. You know, and it's like, oh, and one of the things I would be told is, oh, you've never worked with us to cover any of our, our stuff. And I'm like, that's interesting. And then I just DM my, my buddy who is the senior <laughs> senior PR guy. Oh, say, hey, okay. I'm over here like, hey, uh, you know, this is what I got. And he's like, you got rejected? I'm like, yeah. He's like, hold on. Let me go talk to him. <laughs> And he's like, here's your code. Sorry. Any, if this ever happens again, just come to me. And I'm like, yeah, I, I said, dude, I, I don't want them to get in trouble. They may not know me. You know, I, I understand in the scope of like creators, I'm on the smaller side. But just because I'm a smaller creator, that doesn't mean my work counts any less because I'm uh-huh. still giving you publicity for your stuff. And I said, I appreciate working with you guys. But yeah, it's, I run into that a lot. And I've had some people. And this can tie into the whole uh, me deal and Steam Deck content creators. Um, a lot of them that are, like I said, they're, a lot of them have grown past me. And, you know, 60 to 90 some thousand subscribers. And they're like, they have no connections to the industry. And so now it's like constantly trying to hit me up and ask me for connections and then acting like I'm 
what's the word I'm using? I'm trying to find uh, the gatekeeping. That's the word. A lot. I've been told that I'm gatekeeping from them being able to work with the industry, and I'm like, it's not even that. But you protect your contacts. If yeah. I re- if I refer you, then I have to trust you're going to do the job. So as a perfect example of that, I'm sponsored by Turtle Beach and Rocket and neat microphones since they're all in the same company. I referred somebody to them the beginning of this year. That person who was, they're trying to up and coming creator or they were because before they just stopped making content, uh, they were doing like music covers and their own original stuff. And you know, they do streaming and stuff like that. I reached out, I did a handshake handoff, introduced the person vouched for them heavily and I got fucked over because it got a bunch of these mics, uh, the neat, uh, the King B2, $200 mic, all the newest uh, Turtle Beach and Rocket stuff, didn't make any content for it. Strained my relationship with them. Uh, I had a similar situation happen with, uh, uh, what company was it? NIS America, I had a similar situation happen with PlayStation, a couple other companies that I've reached out for other creators. So I'm at a point now where it's like, unless I really know your work ethic, I just don't. And a lot of these Uh Steam Deck creators, you know, not me trying to shit on anyone or keep anyone from opportunities, but a lot of you popped up within the last six months to a year. I'm happy for your success. I'm not jealous. I'm happy with what I'm doing, but I don't know you. I don't know if you're going to just dip out. I've had a lot of bad experiences and I'm not trying to have my reputation and working relationship with these companies go away. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's like, if you can read it, like I'm I'm trying to reach out to a lot of these companies, a lot of them, you can reach out to the PR people on Twitter. I know a lot of people hate Twitter right now, but you can reach out to people on Twitter I'll have a, if you find a press release, there's an email right there. The information's there if you look for it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's uh, it's a bit of a shady one when it comes to working with people. Like, um, even I said before we actually did start off, uh, I only kind of work with a select hand few of people these days, mostly because, like, um, as I said, online, there's a lot of interesting personalities and egos when it comes to dealing with working in this line of business which can typically go one of two ways so if i kind of like fox with you then i fox with you there's a lot of people in the business who i unfortunately can't say i do that with but you know it's kind of like it's a shame that i i have to say that that is the case i'd love to work with more people but you know, not everyone has that work ethic. No one, not everyone has, you know, respect for other content creators, I'd say. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's a lot of self, that's what, there, there, a lot of people are selfish. I was going to say like self-indulge, but there's a lot of people who are very, very selfish when it comes to doing this line of work. And I think you kind of have to be up to a certain extent, but at least have mm-hmm. like, Trust me, when I um, a lot of people don't get this. Self awareness goes a very, very long way in this industry, and knowing that you know there are consequences to actions, it, it tends to be kind of important, kind of important. Because I'm not going to drop the content creator's name. There's someone who I've worked with in the past and who I've known who've burned bridges down with two major big companies, continues to make the same problem over and over again, and. Uh, I, I the person kept reaching out to me and asking what uh, they were doing wrong, and I kept pointing out the issue. And you know, they took it as a personal knock on them, opposed to you know, like just listening. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know, I, I think again, it comes to the territory, and I just I wish more people could just kind of listen. Yeah, it, it, a lot of people need to also understand. You know, touching on like the the consequences aspect of this. This is a very big yet microscopically small industry mm-hmm. because people talk, people rotate in and out of jobs frequently, mm-hmm. and they, you know, you make a really bad impression that travels. Yeah. So the thing is, uh, again, as you pointed out, 
it, it, it's a small cosmos, but I'll put it like this. Everyone kind of knows everyone because people, the people who are community managers in one place will probably wind up being community managers in two or three other studios in the five years that you get to know them. So your reputation from one literally bleeds over into other studios. Um, and a lot of people don't get that. A lot of people don't stay with the same studios because a lot of the people who work in gaming are also a big fan of games and they might want to work on other games or be a part of other teams just to kind of get better experience or expand their horizons. Um, again, that's not necessarily, doesn't go for everyone because, you know, gaming is a really big, broad spectrum when it comes to the things you could be working on. But if you really like tear down that relationship, let alone multiple relationships, then it puts you in a really bad situation um, for companies to want to incentivize uh, reaching out to you or you know wanting to give you any press or any kind of respectful like time, I'd say. Definitely. And to add to that, one last thing, I will say this. Uh, your follower and sub count doesn't always matter in this industry. Oh, definitely not. Definitely, definitely not. <laughs> no, you, you could, because it is the thing, right? The people don't really sub to channels. They'll watch your content, but they won't sub to it half the time. So the correlation of your viewer count to your sub count are not the same. They are not the same at all. Um, which is why, widely, when it comes to watching content creators, viewer counts are lower than the sub counts. Like, that's just how the business works and how it is. Um, it, it's just that that's how YouTube works. Like, trust me, if it was up to me and I was making about 390k per view, I, I, I'd be in another country right now and smoking so many Cuban cigars I'd have black lungs. Like it, this would this would not be a conversation I'd be having, but that's just not how YouTube kind of works algorithmically. Um, it's just the nature of the beast. Because now, even I was I was having this conversation. Um, the level of act, the level of accessibility to make content has never been easier, and never been lower. Mm -hmm. There is such a big big hive mind of content but is easily accessible that that but that doesn't necessarily mean that it's good um which is how the algorithm kind of fights against you unless you put out something that's really unique and kind of breaks through that barrier but it's literally f uh, feeding a needle through a thread um yeah. so Again, that's another side of like content creation that people don't really hear of or see too much. But again, like um, I, I feel like TikTok's the perfect example of the was it the level of entry being so low that anyone can kind of make it into it. But that doesn't really necessitate riding a wave of momentum successfully for uh, continuously throughout. Yeah. Oh man, have we run the gambit? We we've. I think we may have run the gambit. We could very well be wrong about that, but yeah, you know, I mean, we've had a fair bit to talk about, especially when it comes from like a ranges of content creation, um, kind of catching up post COVID, and then keeping yourself like busy and stuff going forward. I suppose. Yeah, I, I agree. Um, trying to think because uh, I know I, I outlined, and I think we've literally hit on everything um hmm. what's 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 next what's next you know, that's what? actually uh, i was actually gonna ask you that as well i was gonna flip <laughs> the question on you um so that's the interesting part i there is no current plan that's necessarily solid in stone at the moment but I do have some stuff in the pipeline. So now we have the Game Awards around the corner. Depending on what's shown there, may determine what next year's game will be. Uh, it should be kind of a given. I'm going. I'm definitely going to be going back to fighting games. Mm -hmm. um, it's just that now I I now know and I'm quite confident with diversifying uh, my content. 
So I could literally juggle probably three or four games if I wanted to, but I don't want to spread myself so thin, but I can't really enjoy talking or playing games for that matter. Um, so the first one that is in the pipeline, and I can confirm and say that it is in the works, it's not currently ready, um, it will be a remake slash redo of the history of Reeve. That has been in the works for quite a while. It's rounded up to about 25 minutes. Uh, I have, once again, my editing friend working on it. Um, I'm uh, looking to do some other Street Fighter episodes. I actually have, I'm pretty sure I have like a thumbnail for every character at the moment. So that will definitely be happening either at the start of next year or during later half of December. So I'm, I'm quite excited. I'm looking forward to that one. Um, since it's reveal, surprisingly out of nowhere, to no one's surprise, there will be a redone version of the Tekken series, uh, the history of Tekken series. Um, whatever NeverRealm put out next, I will be covering. Um, I don't think I will do a history of series for that because a lot of the older ones that I have from literally three years ago still hold up extremely well. Um, and until NeverRealm can put out a definitive timeline about retconning just absolute shit out of stuff and um, making it really difficult to make a cohesive video about it, I don't feel comfortable in doing a history of episode about it. Like, they need to, like, make sure that's fine. As for whatever game I want to cover additionally on top of that, I'm not necessarily too sure. We're going to have to wait for the Game Awards. Uh, I may end up covering... Um, was it Suicide Squad killed the Justice League? I may end up even covering the Logan game, depending on if it's uh, if it reaches my criteria of sixteen or eighteen. That at least is like not so much revels in its violence, but at least it caters towards a more older audience, and that's definitely something I would love to cover. Um, as for other stuff like personal life stuff, I suppose it is just get into better shape, look after myself, travel a little bit more as well. Um, was it in two weeks? I'll be in New York City. Um, and then in April next year, I'm hoping I can take a holiday to California. Um, and, you know, I can pretty comfortably make this public now because um, it's going to take a long while before it does go through. Uh, I'm currently applying to get a uh, influencer visa to work in the US for next year and then so forth. So we Ooh. shall see how uh, that all comes through. You know, it, it's it's not going to be an easy task, mind you, but I, I feel like, you know, it's a natural progression of what I want to do in terms of work and business, and I feel like a lot of games I cover anyway, and a lot of things I do associated with esports tend to thrive a little bit more in uh, the US than they do over here. So, you know, fingers crossed, we'll see how things go. Um, and what about you yourself, Miguel? Because, you know, I was going to flip this question on you, but you just got to it a little bit quick before I did. Um, well, content wise, I'm like you. Game Awards is kind of going to be a bit of a term determining factor for me. Uh, as far as like coverage of games, I will still cover you know games I'm interested in sometimes ones that are trending I am not going to lock myself into just Steam Deck content because I think that's a trap uh, mm -hmm. ultimately overall like I'm enjoying doing the content for it but I'm still doing other stuff because I know that you know companies drop products all the time if especially mm -hmm. with Valve's history with their hardware uh, so I, I that's why like even with the, the you know the decked up podcast originally it was decked up a Steam Deck podcast but then I rebranded it to uh, a game and entertainment podcast just because I don't want to be limited to that and I when I make content or specific podcast episodes for the Casanova podcast because I have gone so many long stretches of not putting out content for that the listenership and viewership for that is lower but when i rebranded decked up i can put the same content on that 
and it uh-huh. does way better so I can reach a whole different uh, whole new demographic I got to do stuff recently with Netflix uh, for um, Dota Dragon's Blood I, I got to interview the creator of that work with him and I'm going to be doing stuff with him further for upcoming projects that's the most I can say I have oh, yeah. dipping my toes in voice acting I'm getting trained currently by um the voice of M. Bison, so Gerald Rivers, as oh, well nice. as the voice of uh, Barrett from Final Fantasy VII Remake. Uh, so they're they're training me. Uh, I'm pushing to get myself in shape so I can probably start doing, uh, you know, like mocap and whatnot because two of my other friends that are in the industry, uh, the voice of Leon from Resident Evil uh, to remake as well as upcoming Resident Evil 4 remake um, him and the guy who played uh, Ken in uh, Street Fighter uh, Assassin's Fist they're willing to work with me to teach me how to get into mocap and also the um, uh, Ruben Langdon he's godfather he's actually the godfather of my daughter um, so he's I know like People have been trying to cancel him because he likes to talk about aliens and stuff like that. People like to talk about what they want to talk about. Anyway, uh, he's uh, going to be also doing some training with me for voice work and mocap and, and uh, connecting me because I've actually got a very strong ca- uh, relationship with Capcom because of him when they came out here to do stuff a couple years ago and I just got in really good with them. So uh, yeah. I may be pulling back on overall content output like I know people constantly see me posting oh I did this I here's my video for this this and that it's probably gonna go back because I'm shifting to or doing something different and just because it's it's a new challenge and I get bored very easily and I just want to do something different but um, voice acting has been interesting it's very difficult it's not easy at all um, I enjoy it but as far as like just sticking with Steam Deck, yeah. If, if if you came to find my content off of that and you enjoy it, I I'm appreciative of you, but I'm not gonna lock myself in that corner. Mm-hmm. So, no, that's fair, man. Well, it sounds like you got a lot of plans yourself in the works, so that's pretty exciting on your end, I must say. I'm nervous because I I, I know that's gonna be like financially, it's gonna be a uh, probably a dip for a couple weeks or months, but it'll work itself out. Yeah, you'll be good, man. Don't you worry. But hopefully, with the channel, I mean, I like a, this year has been great for the channel. I mean, hopefully, I can end the year. I don't think I will, but if I can end the year twenty thousand, I'd be fine. According to Social Blade, I should be hitting a hundred thousand like a year and a half, and I'm like, was that before? I got sick, and I lost my momentum. <laughs> Never listen to Social Blade. That thing's a parasite. I stopped checking it years ago. <laughs> no, no, I, I, I want to hit at least 50,000 because I feel like there is a perception when you're where I'm at, and a lot of people just don't take you seriously. And right. so I know I shouldn't care, and I don't really care often what people think, but it does influence like how the industry works with you too. Like you can have a catalog of work, but a lot of industry still looks at that. Like it doesn't matter if I get to work with PlayStation or Xbox. They're like, oh, you only have fifteen thousand. That's not easy to get. Jesus Christ. Yeah, it's it's it is a number at best, and like I said, it's it, it doesn't necessarily guarantee you know the viewership of anything. You know, as long if if the content's out there, and God forbid, YouTube's algorithm works in your favor, then it can. But again, it's it's very very slim. Yeah. So all that being said, what are you doing today? Hitting the gym? Uh, <laughs> so not today. Tomorrow's leg day, so I'm not looking forward to that. I'm going to blow out my hamstrings, quads, and calves all at the same time, followed by my back and then my shoulders. But today will be a fun day for me. I, again, 
I, I literally, I finished editing a 33 minute video about three hours ago. So I'm still kind of riding the high of knowing that I can actually sleep tonight without, with no worries. Uh, I have a friend coming over later today um, b because I'm again doing more things outside of just kind of doing it I've recently for unfortunately um, fallen down to the very painful pit known as uh, Yu-Gi-Oh and the gotcha behind it so oh, my God. wallet is currently suffering um, but it's a fun pastime and I'm not playing it competitively so you know what I can play it and just relax and have a good laugh with a friend so yeah th that's how I see it man that's how I see it Okay, uh, streaming. What are your thoughts on that? You're gonna dive back into that. So I, I I stream occasionally on my channel, um, but the thing is, I only stream on YouTube. I I don't stream on Twitch anymore. Um, I think after the whole weird incentive payout change fluctuate TwitchCon madness, I've been like, you know what? These guys have denied me partnership like two or three times, despite, you know, my own applications and me fulfilling their requirements. So to me, I'm just like, someone probably just doesn't like me or whatever. <laughs> Foreign YouTuber scum on this platform, get away. Um, so I've been streaming on YouTube occasionally. Uh, it's been going quite well. Um, I actually, I, I VOD all of that stuff for like the membership program if people ever want to watch it, but I stream every here and there. I do have some fun with it, but it's just like, it's more of a chill thing, and it's honestly whenever I get the time, which is very few and far between, mind you, my friend. Mm -hmm. So, for me, it's, it's a touch and go sort of thing, but streaming's definitely there. It's just kind of doing it in my own time sort of thing. Okay. Uh, Twitter. So I know that's a, that's a hot topic. Uh, are you one of the people that is going to be making an exodus from Twitter and going over to what? What, what is the flavor of the week alternative right now? Because it was Mastodon, then it was Hive. I actually have got Hive, and Hive runs like shit. Yeah, it's not great. The thing is, for me, um, everyone's talking about leaving Twitter. I mentally checked out earlier this year. Uh, to, to me, it doesn't really matter wherever they go. I'm only responding it uh, to people through Messenger or DMs, or if it's a company reaching out to me, then I actually care and listen to it. Up until then, I uh, Elon Musk could do whatever the fuck he wants, and it would change absolutely nothing to me. Um, I think he's a twat, but that's my opinion on Elon Musk. <laughs> that's as far as it needs to go yeah it's it's one of those things like I feel like like if and I know people keep saying Twitter's gonna go down is it I mean we've seen doom and gloom for Twitter Facebook Instagram Snapchat all these for years they haven't gone anywhere will traction go maybe I, but at the same time, I'm kind of like, I'm connected to the people that I want to be connected to. So if Twitter goes, I'm not going to lose connection to you. I can just hit you up on Facebook. <laughs> it's literally that. But the thing is, like, most people incentive to leave Twitter at the moment is because there's a lot of scum returning back to the platform. Yeah. There's a lot of scum and there's a lot of problems coming back to it. And the thing is, it's uh, Twitter holds a very large part in uh, social modern day politics I don't care for that which is yeah. one of the reasons why I left the platform well I say that I'm there on the platform but I'm so absent from interacting with it that I do not care for it and to me all of this makes no difference because I already know my stance on issues and whatever such and such I won't even go into that mm -hmm. but it, to me I, I already know it if people want to leave the platform Trust me, trust me when I say you, your life becomes amazing the second you leave Twitter. As soon as you learn how to moderate that shit, your life mm -hmm. blissful. Because that's what I ended up doing. And I don't, it's why I don't talk and interact with anyone on Twitter. Because half the people on Twitter are there to either repost porn or be really upset about something. 
And I'm not here for either of those things. I'm doing my own thing. So I'm cool with that. And I like working with games and companies. And that's all it needs to be. Yeah. Like Twitter literally becomes. I, I, I got, it got to a point. So I, this year, literally, I think I started checking out too. And then I got to a point where I just started curating it because you, you get to a point where like when you go on Twitter, unlike any other social media platform, it literally would just piss me off. Like yeah. I would see things and I'm like, why is this here? Why is this in my feed? Why is this, why is this person retweeting it? And I just got to a point where I had to like curate it and unfollow people. And then you unfollow people that becomes a shit storm. Mm-hmm. Oh, you unfollowed me. Yeah, I did. And I can mute and block you. You want me to? <laughs> yeah, no, like, straight up, like, if if people... I, I put like this. I have a lot of problems in my life. I don't need Twitter or people on the internet crying to bring that shit to my front door. If you have a problem with me, cool. I, I don't really care. I don't really care. I have other things to do that are far more important. Um... So if, if people want to get upset about that, they're more than welcome to. But trust me when I, I do say, and if you've been able to at least sense some bliss from it, just backing off from Twitter has been one of the best decisions I have made. And as well as like having uh, as heavy of a an personal online presence on the internet. You know, it's it's given me a lot of time to focus and look after myself and then decide from what you can tell a lot of life decisions and personal choices I've made in my life for my own betterment, which, you know, it's clearly bleeding through in some way. Yeah, look at look how small you are. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, we'll get we'll, we'll, we'll get the Hemsworth diet on point, and then we'll, then we'll see, like, who knows, maybe by the end of this next year, I might just be a giant, ver- I might just be an Asian version of The Rock. You never know. <laughs> oh, man. The last thing I'll say about Twitter, because I've been getting a lot of people, uh, come at me since the whole you know you can pay for your check mark so i've had twitter blue since it first came out just because i used it for the 1080p the reader mode and all the other stuff that i've had that for years it's interesting like when i got the check mark i was like oh cool and then the shit storm of people coming at you like oh you pay for it. You pay for this and this, 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 and this, and this is how you got verified. And I'm over here like I don't care about the check mark. I barely respond to people on Twitter. I barely interact with people. Like, God, yeah, it's <laughs> it's a weird form of like. So here's how I I kind of see it. It's people kind of evolving the what is deemed as cyberbullying into a fir- into like a form of weird virtue signaling Mm -hmm. of trying to sound oh I'm better than you because I don't have the check mark and I will bully you for it I'm just like no no you know (laughs) it's just it's one of those online things where I'm just like if it's you know what it is it's people being chronically online for so long but no one else really cares about it except with them and they build their entire personality around it and it is so fucking just it's insane. It's insane. I feel like the way they, it, the internet is isn't the way it was pre-COVID because people went right. outside. Right. Now everyone's cripplingly online and now they think they can say whatever they want because of the internet and not suffer some repercussions in any way. If you say that in real life, a lot of people are going to put their foot in your mouth. And that's going to happen to a lot of these people. And, you know, if that's so be it, then that's so be it. But, you know, like, there's a lot of people that need to, again, just literally touch grass. See the sunlight, for fuck's sake. Mm-hmm. Like, it's it does you a world of good. Yeah. It's, I, I, I was saying to my wife the other day, like, I, t- social media to me, just it stopped being fun a long time ago. And... Yeah now it's it's at a point now you see so much of what people think especially covid like everything about a person's life that i don't care to know i don't need to know like everything's there there's nothing that's an imagination 
And so I, I just find myself disinterested with a lot of people, you know, and I, and mm-hmm. it's, you know, I, one of the weirdest things actually I got from like my sister out here and she's like, are you and your wife? Okay. And I'm like, why? She's like, cause you guys don't post anything with you two together. And I'm like, do we need to mm-hmm. see her every day? It's again. It's one of those cases where it's just like it's literally no one else's kind of business. It's just like it's one of the what was it? If people were lucky for me, I might post the picture maybe once a year on my Instagram, maybe on my Facebook of all things that I I don't touch. You like? Yeah, I can't remember the last time you posted on Facebook. <laughs> you know what? I'm gonna humor you. Let Let's see when the last time was because I I probably I'm gonna say it was 2020. All right, let's see. Last time, all right, I was tagged in the photo, birthday things. So, <laughs> fuck me. All right, <laughs> last time I retweeted or was in anything was March the 9th, 2021. Do you know why? This was why? the last time I was on your podcast. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's good. Oh, man, that's good. Mmm, can't make that one up. Dear lord. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's literally one of those cases where it's, I, I I love the luxury of having a quiet and very private life in that sense. I don't like to put too much out there. If people see me at events, I like to keep it as that. Um, but at the end of the day, I'm just, I'm someone on the internet who really likes games, who really likes fiction, and likes to cross over those two things into making content. That is how I like to see it. And, and that is the, the, the note we will leave this show on. Anything yeah. you want to say further before we go? Uh, no, <laughs> honestly, man, we've been able to touch on so, so much. So I think that is the perfect way to leave it, my friend. Okay. All right. So uh, tell people where they can find you. So if you're interested in any God of War content as well as Street Fighter, Tekken, Mortal Kombat, please find me on YouTube at History Behind the Warrior. If you're interested in following my inactive Twitter, then it's HB the Warrior. And if you are one willing to interest yourselves in my Instagram, which is probably more dead than all of my ancestors, that is HBT Warrior. <laughs> Strong end. We had to go with the double down. Oh, God. Um, yeah. You can't ever say you had that one on there. No, 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 I can't. Um, yeah, so if y'all enjoyed the podcast, uh, you already know what to do. Um, it's on every platform, every major podcasting outlet. I still haven't said which podcast is on, but it's going to be on all of them just because why not cross pollinate? But, uh, yeah, if you enjoy it, leave a rating. Uh, if you're watching it on YouTube, on at Mikhail Casano, why did I say Casano? Casano, whatever. I don't know. It's it's late. It's like 1.50 in the morning here. Anyways, if um you enjoy it, like, share, comment, subscribe, and uh yeah, we, we need to make this not be a yearly thing. Yes, definitely. We need to, yeah. So when you are here and you do come to the States, I think I might be I might be in New York because I gotta see my sisters up there. Right, so we might we, we might be crossing around depending on what part of New York we might be able to because we were supposed to meet each other at uh what combo breaker it was either a com I'm pretty sure it must have been a combo breaker because I've only been to the one Evo and that is a little too much for me these days yeah so that being said uh, if y'all liked it do what you do you know like share comment subscribe all that good stuff but uh yeah we're signing out y'all have a great week. Hey, this is David Hayter. You may know me as the screenwriter of films like X-Men, X-Men 2, and Watchmen, but you probably know me best as the voice of Solid Snake from Metal Gear Solid. And you're listening to Hawaii's number one podcast, the Casanova Podcast. Kept you waiting, huh?